Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch and I'm out at the woodshed. I wanted to talk to you about uh, constructing graphical displays of quantitative information. And in this short take, I'd like to give you a strategy to make use of the comparative advantages of common software. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Excel going to PowerPoint going to Word. And Excel is a good place to start. It's good at making the guts of your graphic. And it's probably where your data are anyway, if you've done any data transformations or calculations. But PowerPoint is good at customizing the graphic. And by that I mean adding objects, whether it's text or arrows or shading, and then moving them around. Plus, you get a slide out of the deal. Nice. And then you move it to Word because Word is good for incorporating the graphic into surrounding text. All right, uh, let me just walk you through the process. And here are some data in Excel. Uh, their data by year of prostate and breast cancer, incidence of metastatic disease. Don't worry about that now, but we're gonna make a, select the data and make a straight lined scatter graph. And there you have uh, the graph. And one of the first things I want you to do here is to format that graph at a consistent size, big enough so you can work with it and actually big enough so it will fill a slide. So I'm going to suggest uh, you go five by eight. Um, five by eight, there we go. Now we can see uh, what we're doing here. And, um, you know, I want Excel to make the graph, not a lot of other things. So I'm going to get rid of some of its uh, defaults. I don't want those lines. And I'm going to fool with the axis here. First, uh, let's make sure the font's big enough to read, 14. And uh, now let's adjust the scale. So uh, the first uh, year on the graph is the first year we have data, which is 1975. And the last year of the graph being the last year we have data, which is 2012. And let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. So now I've got the full course of uh, the data uh, represented in the graph. And that's pretty much all I want uh, from Excel. So I'm going to just uh, select uh, this. Uh, this is a 5 by 8 size. And I'm going to go into PowerPoint where I'll do the rest of my work. I'll paste it, um, and it will paste uh, right in the um, center of the uh, slide. And, um, oh, I can see I forgot to do something. I didn't do the vertical axis, but this is one of the nice things. This is still linked uh, to Excel, so I can uh, change the vertical axis and get it up to 14. And I can uh, also change the maximum because... Uh, the maximum is uh, 75 will still capture all the data so i can make those kind of fine adjustments still even though i'm in powerpoint but the real reason i want to be in powerpoint is so i can add various drawing um, elements that um, are not easy to do in excel uh, some are not possible some are possible but just clunky you could do this in excel you could add a text box it's just a lot easier to do here and I can move it around with uh, great facility and label the uh, x-axis and now I can go ahead and label the uh, y-axis. I can label each lines and I can easily choose the colors of the words so they match the line which of course makes it easier to see which is which and I can add uh, more information like uh, when did uh, widespread mammography uh, screening come on in this country, and I can do the same uh, for when does a prostate cancer screening come on in the country. So now I have a nice graphic. By the way, I have a nice slide I could use in a presentation. Um, and now I want to get it into a Word document. I'm going to select it all and uh, copy it and open up a Word document that has the uh, title of the figure already. And um, I will try just simply pasting it. And uh, let's see uh, what happens there. 
Oh my God, what is that? So you see one of the problems here. It's just got all this, it's lost. What, what, it's terrible, right? So you never want to just straight paste it or you'll get way too much. It won't lose all its relationships. What you want to do is paste special, not as an office graphic or, uh, object, but as a PDF. And that gives you a nice, clean uh, representation. It basically takes a picture of what you made in PowerPoint. It's no longer linked to PowerPoint or Excel. It's just a uh, picture. Now, by the way, you can size it exactly. Uh, you could um, oh, format it, you know, exactly its locked aspect ratio. I can make it smaller and I can get exactly uh, what I want it to do in terms of size. And of course I could center it. I have all sorts of flexibility, but the whole picture will stay internally uh, consistent uh, now. So that's, uh, that's the basic thing I wanted to show you. Three programs uh, to produce a, a nice graphic. Draw a simple clean graph in Excel. Move it into PowerPoint. Once you're in PowerPoint, you can label the axes, you can label the lines, and you can add more complex graphical elements, and you can move them very carefully. Then from PowerPoint, select all the objects and paste them into Word where you can add any text that needs to surround the graphic. So here's the process. Excel, it's good at making the guts of the figure. PowerPoint, good at customizing the graphic plus you get the slide out of the deal and then move it to Word which is good at incorporating the graphic with surrounding text. Caution at this step, remember to paste special as a PDF. So on this beautiful day I wanted to share with you how I construct graphical displays of quantitative information. I should warn you Journal editors have a way of wanting to change it a little bit themselves. But you might as well give them something good to work with. I hope this helps. Thanks.